Christmas days. But if it gives you pleasure. Okay, on this rock, we are just painting the very interior face of an owl. So the eye and the beak, and that's all. And it's going to be looking off to the left. So I want, let's see, we want, now I haven't, you see, I haven't worked out my design yet. I'm going to actually do that with y'all. So I'm wanting, let's see, this, I want the eye kind of in the center. So I'm just trying to figure out, this is going to be, this might be down too low. Okay, so we want the eye. Let's see. I'm going to say I want the eye to be right in here. So, you know, I've done this with you. Well, I guess I haven't. Let's see. This is how I draw, get a circle done. I just make a bunch of circles and I keep widening out my circle until I feel like I've got it round right so I'm doing a bunch of a bunch of circles and then I'm gonna draw this gives me it's kind of like I'm gonna take the line that's the the most round. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm not really worried about this part of my eye, but because my it's going to be hooded with this part of the the face, that kind of face the uh, forehead part of the of the owl's forehead. And then it's got some feathering that comes down across like this part. And then right here. So this is the part of the eye we're going to work on. And so I need to make sure that I've got the round part. So this. Now this is how I get a circle. You may have a better way. You could use a like a, a compass. But there is the, my eye. And that's how I get a circle. By hand. <clears throat> and that's that's round enough. That's, for doing this, I can fix any other part of it with paint. It's you know, it's not a, it's not perfect, but it's close enough for our rock. And then we want this going to be the other side. Now this is all going to fade off into nothing. We do want the beak. And the beak. So if the eye is like that, then I want the beak to kind of come down like that. And then this part. Maybe it's actually up higher. Let's see. Let's 
Now we're gonna, there's gonna be some feathering that comes across here. It's actually gonna come up more across like that. It's gonna kind of cut this eye to make it where it's like not so round. But right, this is all gonna be shaded and this is gonna be shaded. So you're gonna be able to, it's round right in here. And then the pupil of the eye, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, oh, it's hard for me to do it at this angle. Let me get above it, there we go. Do I want it there or don't? So I gotta figure out where I want it. And I don't, I think I want it further down. So, sorry if I'm blowing in the mic. I'm just trying to get rid of the eraser shavings. Maybe I want it right around in there. Okay. And for this, that's all we need for the drawing part. Now we're going to start off by doing this in black and white. So we're going to get some white. Let me grab this. And a little bit of black. So we're going to, this is all going to be about glazing. So we're going to do out the whole design in black and white and then we're going to glaze a little color on top of it. At least that's what I think we're going to do. We're definitely doing it in black and white to begin with. So, the beak is already black because of the background, but we're going to go ahead and paint in the beak. With this, and I'm using Mars Black. And I'm going to feather over the brush strokes so that to smooth those out. And then I'm going to do the lower beak. Pull that paint all the way up under this forehead piece and then over this way a little bit too. All right. Then I'm going to come up here and follow these lines up here that we made. This actually will all be gone. I have a, something on my rock there, a bristle. Okay. So I'm just shading in this section. right now. <clears throat> I have to decide the way I'm going to do this. Let's see. 
I think I'm going to bring this black down further. And that black is going to extend this way. And then there's going to be black. All the way around here. And I'm just kind of feathering that out. Then we're going to do some feathering out this way as well. Like right along right along this line that we had for the for the forehead. Just going to This is just an undercoat. I'm just covering up the my background's black, but it's a flat black, so it looks almost like a charcoal gray. So I'm just putting some paint on the on the rock. And getting rid of any brush strokes. The I don't mind the brush strokes. What I'm getting rid of is any ridges in the paint. Um There we go. So even just with black on black, you can still kind of see where that uh, the the uh, the owl. You can still you can see the owl face. All right. So I am gonna pull some of this black in down here because there's gonna be shadowing that kind of wraps around this eye. Kind of wrap in like this. And then there's going to be some black down in here. It's just going to fade into kind of nothingness. So I'm also kind of working out my design too. So some of this is worked out beforehand. This is what I tend to do when I'm plotting out my design, but since I'm doing it with you, you'll, you have to kind of see the a little bit of the, the madness behind all of this. So, I'm still using my, this is just a little filbert brush, a number six filbert brush from Master's Touch. And now I'm going to wet down my paintbrush. I'm not making a glaze. But I am going to thin the paint down just so that it'll flow better. And I'm trying to decide where to start. I think I'm going to start on the brow, the forehead part. And let's see. So I'm going to pull these back this way. And I'm going to feather. I want to do them like this. I'm trying to create a feather stroke. I guess I'm going to do it off the the toe but the edge. And then I'm going to pull those back and out this way. And as we come towards the end of the rock, you see how I'm feathering that out? And letting it just kind of disappear on the the rock. That's what we want. We want it to just start to disappear. But I don't want this pattern here either. So we're going to work on that in a minute. But let me just fix this, this area. And it's also a straight line, which is another thing I don't want. So 
I'm gonna I'm gonna break up this line. I'm gonna pull this in. I'm just gonna. Oops, that's got way too much water in it. And then that line comes out over this way some too. And there's going to be another layer. So this is what our rock looks like. Let's see. I want to pull this in a little bit. I just want to, I don't want this line, I don't want this part to be a straight line. So I curved it in a little bit. Now there's another sections of feathers that's going to come off this eye like this. And it's going to tie in. And there's going to be some there. And then some that now we're going to start. Feathering those off on the rock as well. Now this is just our first coat. You know, we, I like to paint in layers. Then we're going to do some that are going to come. These are a little bit more wispy. I may have to switch paint brushes for this part. Or thin this down a little bit more. Let's see if we can just thin it down. And I'm just barely dipping into my water, just the, just the toe, the tip of the bristles, just barely, uh, barely pulling into those. Okay, so now we're gonna, we've got this part established. So now we'll pull back towards the eye, and this, and you want to make sure you pull your feathers in the direction of the fe that the feather growth would grow. And you can tell when your paint starts to get too dry is that like there's a texture on my rock and you can start to see the texture through the paint which tells me that I need to thin my paint down just a little bit so that it'll flow better off my paintbrush and onto the rock. And again I'm still using the tip of the paintbrush but I'm using the side edge. And we are going to start feathering that out with the flat part of the paintbrush. And we're letting this, we're letting the paint break apart and we're letting it thin as we come down and letting it fade off into the, into the rock. We are going to do this side. I need to figure out where I'm at here. So this side, I'm taking off some of that paint because I want this to be a little, a little grayer. I want it to, and as this paint dries, it will gray out a little bit. Oops, that went over my. That went over my beak, and that's fine. Okay. There we go. And that is pretty much what we're going for. So now we need to start doing some... <clears throat> I'm going to be feathering over this and we're going to start tightening up the details. For one, we need to add some white into the eye and I'm using a raked brush. This is a, it's hard to see, unless, a Royal Aqualon Wisp and it's a number nine. Oh no, no, sorry. It's a, an eighth. So I guess it's like an, it says it's an eighth of an inch, 
mine's been worn out so it's a lot more splayed these work better when they get a little age to them and I don't I'm gonna try this with this I'm not sure if this is gonna be the the right that's yeah, probably not it might work what I'm wanting is lines that radiate from the eye uh, the pupil out and I want them brighter in this section and I'm letting this kind of dry brush out and I know there's a is there a little bit of a glare Is this auto focusing? Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, now it should stop autofocusing. All right, sorry about that. Now you want, you don't want a wet brush at all to do this. Just barely slightly damp. Lost my reference photo. I'm going to grab. This is a round paintbrush. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of paint right on the tip. You can see that. Because I need this paint along. I want it to be brighter right up here at the pupil. Like I want it more solid. And then I'll pull some lines down from that. Is about it there so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do kind of the same thing with just some small small lines I may end up doing that with this rake brush but I am going to thin the paint out this time we, we do want to load the brush up with some paint and then I dab it all out and to, and reload I just want the tips so we're just going to be pulling out, you can see how it's just going to pull out some very fine lines. That's what we want it to do. So you want to get the consistency right. And we're just going to come up here, right under the eye, and pull out some fine lines.
because <clears throat> the feathering around their eyes is more like hair. I used to work at a, well, I didn't work, I volunteered at an animal wildlife rehabilitation center. And so I have been up close and personal with these guys and they're beautiful and they're scary when you have to hold them up close and they're, they have talons and the pounds per square inch that they can squeeze with their talons is incredible. And pretty much if they latch onto your glove, the only thing you can do is try to weasel your hand out of the glove because they're not going to let go of that glove until you let go of them and you can't let go of them as long as they have a hold of your glove so, and your hands in it. So they can be a little, they can be a little intimidating. But they are beautiful. So now we're going to do that right around this brow line or forehead line, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I guess in this case, it is kind of going over the eye like a brow. Then I'm going to feather. We're just feathering some of these out. We're not, I'm not trying to cover up everything underneath. I'm just wanting some wisps kind of. This one was a little dark, but it will fade. As you put your paint on, it goes on brighter, and then you'll notice it'll darken. It's called color shifting, and most most paints do have a bit of color shift to them. Um, the more expensive brands uh, won't color shift as bad, but you can expect a little bit of color shifting. That is normal. So as we do this, we may have to just darken, keep applying to get the true color. All right. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just wisp some off in this direction too. You don't want everything going in the same, you know, you can crisscross some of these a little bit just to give it a little bit more interest and doesn't look like a pattern. See how I'm pulling some up and some over. And I'm just barely letting the tips touch. If you get it too dark, just hit it with your finger and it'll pull some of that paint off, and then you can just go over it later. There we go. So we're just going to leave that like that. I think we have some of this kind of comes down here a little ways. I don't want too much. I'm just going to add a little bit in here periodically just to break up those feathers a little bit. Now I do need, I need to do some right here at the eye. I don't want there to be like this distinct, I want a dark section through here, but I, I don't want it so dark that you can't really, where it looks like a line. I just want to be a dark section, not a dark line. So now that we've done that, now we're going to take some of that black 
and we're going to go and feather some of this black in. Whoops, that's way too watered down. Now this isn't a glaze again. You want it thin enough to where it'll flow well off of your paintbrush. Remember I dab off the paint and then I pick some up and I just want to make sure that I'm just getting good little stripes. There we go. If you get too much water on your brush when you're doing this, it'll bleed. Like it'll, it'll spread. And that's what you don't want. Okay, so some of these. And what we're doing is just adding, I need this just a little bit thinner. So it's, a, it's kind of a back and forth. You've got to have the paint kind of at the right consistency. And sometimes that can be kind of a bugger to figure out. And see, when I load my brush, I'm looking, it's kind of hard to see. I don't, let's, let's see if I can get it to happen. Um, I don't want big globs of paint in there. I want where you can see that all the bristles are broken apart. And one way you can do that is when you're loading, push. I load like this a lot of times, but push up and that'll help spread those bristles out. <clears throat> Excuse me. That'll spread those bristles out a little bit for you. And we want some of these to kind of go up over this bridge, this uh forehead brow line we want some of these to kind of feather over that to blend over that looked too much like a that was too much right there so just dab it with your finger that'll break that up I don't know if you can see And you don't want just this solid line, so pull some of these up higher and see how these are looking like a pattern. If ever you've got a pattern, just break it up. Just either, you don't want a solid line and you don't want a pattern in there. So if you get a pattern, just change up your brush strokes to uh, break up that pattern a little bit. Now see, down here where my feathering is too solid, now I can take this black and pull it off the ends of those feathers and really break it up. See, like, especially right in here. And I can break up that pattern and really let it fade. I think what I'm going to end up doing is pulling some more of this out, I think. I have to think about that. Break up some more of this. Because I want the fading of the feathers where they blend into the background. I want it to start a, more up on the top of the rock, not on the sides. Definitely going to darken this up. Pull some of this in. And I'm hitting it with the further up the brush and then breaking up that it puts a glob down and then it then I pull and it breaks up that that blob a little bit I 
I need to work about right in here. You see where it it got too much of a blob here, here. Like there's a pattern back here. Don't worry about that. I'm going to break that up too. I do want to pull some. Whoa, that had too much water in it. All right. I definitely want more white. I want the owl shape to be more round. It's real round here, and then it flattens out. So I am going to pull some white up. further up on this rock so we have a better shape on the rock it'll it'll be more appealing so there's the base color now we're going to go in and do some shorter feather strokes And then we'll break up that even more with some random and you can do these I do them kind of quick but you can slow this way down and be more methodical and you know sometimes I do encourage that um, like it can be more methodical about where you want your little hairs. You don't have to do it fast. There we go. I do want to do something with this line down here. I don't mind this being darker because there should be a recess right here where the eye is. So I, that part's not bothering me. All right, so now I'm going to work on the eye. I'm really liking all of this this is working for me. I do want to take real fast I want to pull some black hairs. I want to pull some that say this where you gotta you gotta get that right consistency kind of pull off there Okay, so I need to work on the eye, and I need to work on the beak a little bit. So we're going to work on the eye first, and I'm just going to load up some white. And this is on a very thin paintbrush, and we're going to draw a line, very thin line. This would be the equivalent of the tear line in our eye. And I know it's it's not perfect right now. So I've got it in, but I don't I don't need all of it really bright. I only want sections of it really bright so I'm going to reload and I'm going to brighten up just some some of this. Just 
just in areas and I may do some dots when I say brighten it just I'm just doing thicker coats of white so they're more true true white And I am going to come back up here and streak down right at that center. Right through here, I want it to be the brighter part of the eye. So I'm going to add a little bit more white right in this area so that when we glaze color over it, this part will be the brightest part. Now you could just do this in black and white. You could leave it like that if you wanted to. Which we definitely could do. We could just leave it this color. Um, so now I'm making a gray. I'm just, and I'm going to stay with this paintbrush. Kind of a dark gray, I guess. We'll see what that looks like first. We're going to go over that beak, maybe a little bit lighter, where like the light's catching it. Then keep lightening it up. Now for this, we are going to, I'm going to glaze that back. So I'm going to take a little of that color and I, this brush is damp. So I'm just letting that water come out onto the palette and I'm just thinning that, that gray down. And I know it's hard to see because I got a, my palette, the back of it is painted gray, but this does have gray paint on it and I'm going to just pull that gray back, glaze it back a little bit. And if you need it a little lighter, just grab a little bit more. I want this top portion. Part of the beak to be lighter. And I want it to come down to the tip. And I need the tip to be kind of pronounced. So we are going to... Oops. Glaze that. Okay, so now I'm going to, we're going to glaze on some color. I don't like this line here. I still have kind of a distinct line on my rock. I don't know if you can kind of see it there. There's a distinct line. I don't like that. And I want to glaze some dark right around here. I'm going to darken the pupil. So let's start with find some black paint. I don't have any that's <clears throat> okay. Just grab a little bit of that and we will add some water and glaze. You see how I'll pull it out until I can start to see that I can get it into the right consistency. That's how you have to kind of just play with it. Okay, so now I'm just going to glaze on. And I'm putting the color, and this is kind of in a stripe. And then we're going to break it up. We're going to clean the paintbrush. And get most of the moisture off. And then we're going to come up here and 
pull just scrub along that bottom line and that's going to kind of break up that bottom part of the line and you can pull that shading out just a little bit and if you go up too much you can just go back in get the paint off the brush and the moisture and then we're just going to scrub along that bottom edge there we go so now that's we're going to come back up here. We're going to grab some more. And we're going to go right along the outside of this beak. Just darken the area right outside the beak. That'll help kind of clean up that line. And push these feathers back a little bit. And we're going to go up along the under the brow line and just darken that up. We're ju just graying this down a little bit. And since this is a glaze, you can still see the white through it. It's just graying it up a little bit. I'll pull this up just so you can see. Now I am going to a little bit more this you know your glaze paint dries very fast so pick up some more glaze and then I'm gonna glaze right on top of that white line okay. and my paint was kind of thin so I'm gonna come back over it again And I'm waiting for one of my goats to kid. She should be kidding any day now. And if you're not familiar with the term, it, it just means she's going to have a baby any day now. And then I'll have some baby goat pictures to share with you. Because I'll tell you what, I may be partial, but there is nothing cuter than a baby goat. Okay, so I got that. You kind of see where I glazed in those lines. I am going to break up this line, though, a little bit by hitting it and blending it up a little bit. Now I'm going to get just some straight black and paint in this pupil. I'll be careful to make it round. My cat is knocking stuff off of it. She's knocking something down. I don't know what she's doing. She's behind me knocking stuff down. I can hear it all falling to the floor. It's probably papers or something. I'm just working on trying to get this into a, as close of a circle as I can. not perfect 
by any means. <laughs> That's not even close to perfect. Let's see if we can fix that. I feel like it's this corner right here that's off. See how I just do it? In, there we go. That's going to be close enough. I feel like if I keep pushing, I'll uh, we'll push it too far. And I have some white pens, uh, charcoal lines up here, so I'm just going to use water and erase those lines. Now we're going to work on glazing this line out that I showed you, that I have kind of a distinct line there, so I'm going to glaze that out too. So I'm going to thin my paint down, and then we're going to glaze color, maybe a little too thin, and just break up that line. So I'm going to pull some of the glaze down towards the eye and here and then again feather the edge out and I'm feathering you know it's darker up here but then I'm taking that edge and see how I'm pulling See how it's getting darker right in here? I'm pulling that down. But I'm also following the uh, the growth of the feather, you know, the, the way we painted in the feathers. I'm not going against, I pulled too much paint right there. So let's see, now we're gonna try to pull, I'm gonna glaze some, paint up into the forehead too. Darken that glaze up a little bit. And we are going to try to break that line up. And I'm I'm kind of just this glaze is a little thicker. So you can kind of see now I have this line right there. So we're just going to keep feathering that line out. Until it starts to blend. There we go. And let's see, do we still see the line? Uh, I now have a line up here. But that's okay, because I am going to fix that. I'm going to pull some of that out. See how I broke that up by pushing some of that paint away from the line, and it there we go. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna fix this spot right here. I can see I've got a white spot right there, which I don't like. All right. The other thing I'm going to do, I know I've got just a bad glare on the rock. <clears throat> I'm going to glaze a little bit of shadow into here. I'm just dulling that white down right there because it was a little too bright. Okay, now we're going to, <laughs> normally you don't make a glaze out of white because it's not translucent, but I'm basically thinning this down to a glaze consistency, and I'm going to come over the top of this beak right up here at the top and feather that out. I want that to be the brightest part. 
and then I'm going to keep going over it until it's actually a highlight. So now I'm taking, if this is just straight white, but I'm removing as much of it off my brush and I'm just going over that top section so now it's got a good highlight up here it does something weird right here hang on just a second let me see if I can let's see if I can just fix this There we go. All right. And if you want to, let's see. I don't know so if we want to glaze or go over any of this with some white just to bring back some of this. And break up this line a little bit. And then we can kind of see how I'm just pulling some feather strokes up and down. That's helping break up that line, but it's not making it so that it's a pattern that's the main thing you just don't want to you don't want to have a pattern where it's real obvious nature doesn't isn't like that So I'm just using I'm just using a gray to kind of lighten up that black a little bit. And we can just keep going back and forth, you know, if you feel like you've lightened a section up too much, just take your glaze and kind of go back over and fix areas that you think should have stayed a little darker. I definitely like I want this corner to be dark but I want to feather it out so I'm going to remove the paint that's in my brush and I'm going to feather that down a little bit now this rock could definitely be left just as black and white if you wanted to it'd look good I'm gonna go ahead and glaze it with color uh, just so you could see what it would look like um, I might end up liking it better as black and white but just so you can see what it'll look like I am going to go ahead and glaze color over it. But before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and sign it since I have the black and white out here. Before this all dries, I'm going to sign this in white. Might take just a little bit of black and make it a gray so it's not quite so bright. And figure out where my rock is how I want it positioned. I want it positioned like that. I tend to always sign over here. I'm right-handed. Uh, this is the area I prefer to sign in, but sometimes the design forces me to sign somewhere else.
have two stripes going across my A, but I, oh well, it'll be all right. Now we still have to do the, the eye shine, but we'll do that in a little bit. So I have quite a mess going here. So I'm going to grab a paper towel and I'm going to spray this down with some water. I just misted that with water. I'm going to take a razor blade and I am going to just scoop all of this up. And my palette is now clean. Very simple. I love this palette. It actually has a uh, almost like a Tupperware thing that it sits in that will, if you put a wet paper towel in it and put the lid on, it airtight and it will um, keep your paints fresh for quite a while. Kind of surprising. So I'm just going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber. I'm not sure what all colors I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to take some orange for the eye. And maybe a little bit of yellow. Before I get into this yellow, let me rinse my paintbrush. Oops, I just bumped my microphone. Sorry about that. Okay. So now, if you're ever doing a portrait, this is a great way to, to paint anything. You can always uh, paint it in black and white, and then you can glaze your color over it. You can do this in acrylics, and you can do this in oils. Um, I can't remember. It's like the Gris... Grisai method. There's a name for this. Um, some people do it in black and white. Some people will do it with uh, like burnt sienna. So it's got that sepia color to it. Uh, but it really is a great way to learn your values without having to worry about color. So you get your values in, you get your darks and your lights in there. Then you go in and you glaze the color over it. So we are going to just start doing that. Let's see. And I'm just using a, this is just a glaze. Again, it's a thin color because you want to be able to see the color, in this case, the white and the black behind it. So we're just going to glaze this on. And I'm going to can see that due to the glare. So anywhere where the paint is darker, I'm doing the burnt umber. And then up here where the paint is a little lighter, I'm going to just glaze in some burnt sienna. in some areas. And I'm not putting it everywhere right now. I, I don't know. See, I'm still trying to figure out how I want this. Now, I am over the shadows. I definitely want to glaze that color. But I want there to be areas up here for sure that are darker and lighter.
pull some of this over here as well. See how it's just adding, it's like adding just a little flavor to it. I do actually kind of like it. So I'm going to do that down here. I'm going to come out here and glaze some of that darker brown into this feathering. So there, you can see now our owl has some color to it. So we're going to take the orange, glaze that over. We're going to do the whole eye. Oops. There's way too much water over here. So I'm going to let that orange, oops, I just want to add a little bit more right in here. So we're going to let that dry for a second and then we're going to glaze this yellow onto that. It's still not quite dry enough. I just want to, I'm not going to worry about taking this color up towards the top that's in shadow. I just want this down here. And I don't want to get it on this white ring either.
There we go. Now I'm going to take some white. I'm going to draw out my the eye sparkle. And I think I want this to start here. And I'm just going to Kind of, I want it to kind of go. There we go. And then I might add just a little dot right there. I don't know if you can see that very well. And if it doesn't make it, like sometimes I'll do two dots, sometimes I won't. That doesn't seem to be doing anything except for now it's taken the yellow off my eye <laughs> so if that doesn't work then what we'll do is leave that like that and create one more dot right there there we go yeah, that looks good. Sometimes you have to figure out where your dots are going to look best. And there we go. Now I will go out and glaze this rock and I'll show you what that's going to look like. And here is how it turned out with the sealer on there. This is one coat of the sealer. I will add another, a second coat. 